All right, so, so we're going to look at some examples of finding the sum of a series. So here we go. This is find, uh, compute the sums below. Assume that the terms in the first sum are consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. All right, let's get after it here. So we have 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus so on and so forth, all the way up to negative 540. So doing a little bit of labeling here, that 8 is our first term, a sub 1. Uh, we are minus 4, minus 4, okay. Uh, this is our nth term. I don't know how far uh, it took me to get to negative 540. Uh, was that 100 terms, 90 terms, 200 terms? 100, I don't know how many terms that took. Um, I'll summarize that. So a sub 1 equals 8. d is negative 4. And uh, the formula that I want to use here is that summation. The summation of the first n terms is equal to the first term plus the last term times the number of terms divided by 2. Now what I don't know is n. I don't know how many how many are in between the dot dot dots or how many those represent. I mean I know the first term and I know the last term a sub n is this guy. I know the two but I don't know this. So uh, I'll just make this a little bit more clear. A sub n. It really looks like an r. It's not an r. It's an n there. So make sure you get that right. Negative 540. So I'm going to use a sort of like intermediate uh, formula to help me out here. This is from one of the previous lessons. That is the nth term is equal to the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. So negative 540 equals the first term, which was 8, times common difference, negative 4, times n minus 1. So I'll go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. I get negative 548 equals negative 4 times n minus 1. Divide both sides by negative 4. I get 137 is equal to n minus 1. So 138 equals n. Oh, okay. So that's there's 138 terms here from the 8 all the way to the negative 540. And that's the number that I need to know. So going over here to this formula, the sum of the first 138 terms is equal to the first term, 8, plus the last term negative 540, times n, the number of terms, which is 138, divided by 2. If you do that, uh, simple expression, you came up with negative 36,708, and that is what you would get if you were to add up all those numbers. So, that's pretty neat. Uh, there it is given to us in a sort of a series form. Now we've got it in a summation form. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this a little bit closer here. So uh, this is, you know, j equals 1. This is our counter, j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3, j equals 4. We're going to go all the way up to 92. So that, that's our n. That's our number of terms. We've got 92 terms. Then uh, let's go ahead and figure out what that first term is. We really want to use this formula, so we need to find the first term. So I'll plug in uh, j equals 1 here. So negative 2 times 1 plus 11. And... <clears throat> That's our a, a1, that's our first term. So negative 2 plus 11 is 9. Okay, got it. Then I need to find the last term, the nth term. So a sub n is a sub 92. So I'll plug in 92 here for my j. So negative 2 times 92 plus 11. So the 92nd term is negative 173. I've got the first term, I've got the last term, I've got the number of terms. That's all I need to plug into this formula. So the summation of the first 92 terms is equal to first term, so 9 plus last term, negative 173, times the number of terms, which is 92, divided by 2. And that's going to be negative 7,544. That's a good answer. And we're done with that problem. Uh, these problems looks like maybe a geometric series here. Uh, ooh, if applicable, write your answer as a fraction. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. So looking over here, I've got the first term, which is 3, and then the next one is 3 times 1 half, and then 3 times 1 half times 1 half. So yep, looks like they're multiplying by 1 half each time. So, uh, I'm also going to label here, this is a sub 2, this is a sub 3, all the way over there. We can notice that the uh, exponent there is always one less than the uh, the term number. So when it's the third term, that's a 2. 
when this is the second term, that's a 1. So since this is a 7 right here, then this must be the 8th term. So we're looking to add up the first 8 terms. So uh, the formula, S of n equals a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. I'm looking for the sum of the first 8 terms. So that's going to be the first term, which is 3, times uh, 1 minus 1 half to the 8th power all over 1 minus 1 half. And uh, if you type that in a calculator, then uh, have it queued up for a fraction. You end up with a nice fraction of 765 divided by 128. So did that myself, verified it. It's correct. All right, so uh, let's look at this summation here. So we have the summation of k equals 1 to 9 or of negative 4 to the k power. So we uh, need to figure out that first term. This formula is the same formula. I just need to figure out what that first term is, and I need to figure out what r is equal to. So I'll say k equals 1. That's negative 4 to the first. k equals 2. That's going to be negative 4 squared. k equals 3. That's going to be negative 4 to the third power, so on and so forth. So uh, negative 4 to the first is negative 4. Then this is going to be plus 16 minus 64. Just sort of looking through there, that uh, seems to be that the, this term right here is our first term. Uh, we're multiplying by negative 4, multiplying by negative 4 each time, so a common ratio of 4. Applying that formula there, uh, n is that top number, just like we saw in the previous example. Uh, is number 1, that is. So n is equal to 9. So we have n, s sub 9 equals the first term, negative 4, times 1 minus r, r is also negative 4, to the 9th, all divided by 1 minus negative 4. And if we do that, we end up with quite a large number, negative 209,716. And uh, definitely that is going to be a very large number, because you can imagine negative 4 plus 16 plus negative 64, so on and so forth. All right, final example here. Give exact values, not decimal approximations. If the sum does not exist, click on no sum, which we don't have it clicked here, but that is an option for us. All right, um, here's our first term. Here's our a sub 1, 3 over 5. And then, interestingly enough, we're multiplying that by 3 fifths to get here, multiplying that by 3 fifths to get here. So uh, this dot, dot, dot here is indicating that this is an infinite geometric series. So for the infinite geometric series, we're going to use the infinite geometric series formula. So that's s equals the first term times, or sorry, divided by 1 minus r. So 3 fifths divided by 1 minus 3 fifths. And that's 3 halves. Okay. Notice that our r value is less than 1. And if it's less than 1, then we know that it, uh, it converges to a specific number. And it's kind of hard to see that. All right, so I got that cut off somehow, but then I pulled it back up. Anyway, so three halves. That's the answer to that first part, part A. Uh, part B, we can see, our, see here once again it's infinite, so we're going from j equals 1 up to infinity. And, and you say, how can I add up an infinite number of things? Well, we did here, and it turned out to approach three halves. Let's see what happens when we add up an infinite number of things down here. So just uh, plug in some numbers here so we can get a better idea. Negative, uh, plug in j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3. So we have negative 3 to the first, negative 3 to the second, negative 3 to the third. So that's going to be negative 3 plus 9 minus 27. Uh, notice here this is times a negative 3 times a negative 3. Now this is different from that previous one because uh, in this case r is equal to 3. That's our common difference and that is bigger than 1. So this is a no sum situation. This is uh, this does not approach a specific number. And uh, that makes us real happy because we don't have to do any more work. We don't, we don't have to apply it to the formula. All right. Well, that concludes uh, geometric series and arithmetic series and how to find uh, that summation value. Uh, Good luck doing this on your own. Thanks for watching.